welcome back to our channel. Uh, we have some exciting news. <laughs> we bought our second house. Yeah. And it will be a primarily Airbnb, and we will get to use it too. It's up in Tempe. So, uh, just real quick, before uh, I'm not sure everybody knows what Tempe is. It's in the Phoenix, Arizona. So in Phoenix, you're gonna have Scottsdale, Phoenix. Tempe, Gilbert, Mesa, Chandler, yeah. So it's it's a big metroplex. So we just bought, uh, closed on a second house in the Tempe area. So Tempe is where ASU is, Arizona State University, biggest university in Arizona. Mm -hmm. So it was a strategic decision for us. We have been looking f since March, so about three months or so, and we've looked all across phoenix yeah so a little bit of backstory on it we both moved here for well not both uh, the family moved here for a job we had here in the tucson area uh we moved here about three years ago and then han recently within the last year got a, another opportunity up in the uh phoenix area so with that opportunity came a, a job relocation package and we were very happy with where we're living um didn't really want to move especially because my job's still here in tucson we decided we were just going to capitalize on that relocation package and instead buy a second house so we had been saving for quite a bit uh and then also kind of dipping our toes into the areas we wanted to be in uh, previous years because we don't have a pool in our house we would go up to phoenix quite a bit we would rent airbnbs the kids birthdays we would go up there uh, so we had a pretty good idea of where we wanted to be and like the fun areas to go to but yeah we we it's we because we were right now interest rates are high phoenix housing prices have gone up quite a bit right so there was a period of time I mean, even as we were searching for houses where we didn't really know if this is what we wanted again the minimum the cheapest houses we saw were like four hundred thousand, and uh, to not sell this house and to buy a second house you know we're not rich we're not you know we don't have a bunch of cash yeah, sitting we're around, young right? 30s so. Right? so that it took a, took actually a lot of courage and commitment to actually you know commit that hey this is what we're going it to was do. scary yeah mm -hmm. and and not only was it scary so we had gone up there and we were looking in a different area and we just weren't happy so much we wanted to be in the mix of things and if you're in the mix of things you're going to pay a premium to be in the mix of things so we started the process of actually going in and um looking at houses and starting the actual house search in march right mm -hmm. or may March. March, yeah, March. yeah, March of 2023, and uh, that set us, you know, catapulted us into uh, what exactly we were looking for for Airbnb. Uh, we knew again we wanted to be in the mix of things. We kind of had an idea, you know, with being at so many Airbnbs and renting them, the layout we wanted, right? So we really wanted at least a three bedroom, two bath. Wanted to be in the mix of things. We didn't want something super expensive, but we were also looking for a pool. So when you're having this niche idea of what you're looking for, chances are you're going to be finding people who are also in the Airbnb market looking for the same thing. So when we saw good houses that, you know, you go to houses and it's nicely remodeled, you, it almost has an Airbnb feel, mm -hmm. right? And we would start getting into bidding wars where we almost felt like we were in, competing with other we Airbnb investors. Yeah. You know, they were waiving inspection, they were waiving appraisal, you know, all cash offers, right? And we they also had stipulations of what was it where you yeah they 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 even had something like where if you get an offer better than the offer we're giving you right now you know we will give you an extra five grand on top of the best yeah. offer so no matter what you bid that person had a stipulation in their contract that they would outbid you mm -hmm. regardless so we were realizing and then not only that there was like again we had an idea of what we wanted for Airbnb. we would have our uh, realtor go there because we were both working from home go there and look at the house but before he even got into the house there would be uh offers for that same house and that person hadn't even looked at it yet. Mm -hmm. So we knew we weren't looking for houses that were in the same market as like first time owners or anything like that. We knew that we were in this business of Airbnb and we were competing for houses that other business Airbnbs already had money saved up for. So it was, we were getting kind of pushed out of the market essentially, right? Um, so that was a little um, disheartening, but we just kept persevering and there was a couple moments, even like friends who were like, are you sure this is the time? Are you sure, you know, maybe this is a sign? And we're like, 
No. no. And, and that's where you know my comment about commitment comes in, right? There is, whenever you make a big financial decision like this, there's always going to be doubts. You know, even now after having the house, and you know, we'll get into the Airbnb details and you know what the profit profitability is like. But even now, you start getting into doubts, right? And I think there's something about commitment that you know is kind of looked over. We are committed to doing this, right? And we've had many discussions, especially if we had two houses fall through. Yeah. You know, and we'll in, talk about that. Right. But you know, there's I think it's there's something about commitment and we really truly committed to doing this. Yeah, and I'm glad that we did I mean obviously we're married, but that we had each other as partners on this because I think hearing people trying to tell us it wasn't the right time or even our self doubt, right? Because mm-hmm. It is scary. Interest rates are just going through the roof and the market is crazy. So um, it was good to have your partner like hold your hand and say like, no, we're going to we're going to persevere. We're going to get the house. So, uh, yeah, that was a little bit of backstory. So we started looking for houses in March, seriously looking for houses in March. And then um, we had two houses fall through prior to the house we have now. So the very first house we put an offer in. Uh, we kept going back and forth with the owner, the the seller. She wanted us to pay for her furniture. She wanted to have the house furnished, and we didn't want any of her furniture. So we put in an offer, and she said, "Well, the offer's a little low, but we'll give you our furniture, you know, to kind of help you with that." But her taste in furniture was questionable yeah you know yeah and let me say it was an airbnb so she was able to furnish the data to prove she was making profit off of this house but we didn't want her furniture it was not the way i would want to furnish an airbnb so she kept trying to push us into raising the offer pricing with using her her furniture as leverage but we didn't want it we felt like a lot of it was going to end up in the trash anyway Mm -hmm. So we, as we were trying to work through the um, stipulations with her, we found a second house. So we went ahead and we dropped that first house and started pursuing a second house. So we stuck up uh, offering the second house. Good locations, actually one mile away from the house that we have now. Um, and we weren't going to look at these houses in person. We were both working from home. We didn't have the opportunity to run up there and look at each and every house. So we put an offer in without actually seeing it. We had our realtor go and FaceTime us or do a Zoom meeting. And I liked it, it was really cute. So we stuck an offer in there and full steam ahead, we were definitely planning to close on it, but it didn't appraise. So the offer we had um, placed for the house didn't appraise. Didn't appraise and then the owner said, so you know, when those those of us who are familiar with home buying purchases, when it doesn't appraise, you have a clause in there saying the buyer can back out unless the seller drops the offer, right? Uh, drops the selling price. The sellers came back and said, we are not going to drop the you know house, house price, nor are we willing to do any repairs. So they kind of took a really hard stance suddenly, and um, we just didn't find the find it to be a reasonable offer. So we pulled out. Yeah, and it did work out for them in the long run because they actually got everything they asked for when they closed on their house officially with a different Mm -hmm. uh, buyer. So I think everybody was kind of happy walking away from that deal. Uh, But then the third house we got, we uh, it was unfortunate because the sellers had already gone under contract twice. So I think they were kind of defeated when we came in. Uh, So we placed an offer with them. They're going through a divorce. Yeah. yeah. So they were ready to be done. So we placed an offer with them. They took our offer. And then there was a... Actually, their inspection went really well. There wasn't many no, things. There, there wasn't many. And they they were very eager to actually... You know, we're not... We, we aren't trying to be particularly picky with the you know inspections. We understand that the house is older and some things, you know, we're not asking them to upgrade the entire plumbing or electrical stuff, right? But the things that we asked, they were very responsive and they did it. And then the appraisal came, and then it appraised for a lot seven, less. seventeen thousand less than you know what, what the agreed upon price was, and the sellers were furious. They were, I would be too. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they were furious. They apparently said, you know, your loan company is garbage, your appraiser is garbage, you know, all that, right? And then we approached them and said, hey. 
reasonably we would be able to put down 5k more than what the appraisal is but anything above that would be a little more difficult right and uh, it took them a day to digest that and they agreed so they lowered the price by you know 12,000 so at the end of the day we got a pretty nice house right we got it for less than the originally agreed upon price and they you know left the house in decent shape they left some trash behind in the back alleyway and there's well, there's some complaints i have but overall overall we yeah. got we got a, a really great house for a really good price mm -hmm. a lot of it was remodeled by them so um it, it it worked out it actually god's plan it worked out for us the way it did um so it's a three bedroom two bath built 1975 so it's an older home but it's been remodeled um, the, the ceilings had popcorn ceilings and they were tested to be asbestos. And then I wanted to paint the interior. The outside was beautiful, but the inside was definitely dingy. There was holes in the wall from all the times that there was paintings hung and then taken down and hung again. Um, so we went in, uh, the day we closed, we closed on a Wednesday. The following Monday, we had a team out there in their hazmat suit, completely removed all the ha or all the popcorn ceilings, um, and then we had a team in there uh, Wednesday, the following week, mm -hmm. to do the painting. painting. They painted so. for three days, and then the fresh coat of paint actually, I think, really did. Yeah. You know, that was worth that. The that price. was worth yeah. you know yeah. the, the price for sure because the house just kind of looks a lot cleaner. It looks clean. I yeah. mean, when you have a nice bright paint job it just makes the house immediately look cleaner right so we did that that was one of the bigger investments we did so let me backtrack we um ended up purchasing the house for four hundred and fifty seven thousand. Yep. then it took us uh, the popcorn removal ceilings was about two thousand yep and then the paint job was five thousand five hundred no oh. three thousand three hundred oh okay even better right yeah um, and then it took us a, and Han, I'm sure we're gonna do another video on this. Yep, we'll do a separate vlog on this about, you know, about how much does it cost to furnish a three bedroom, two bath house from scratch, Yes. right? And, and we'll go into that. Yeah. Maybe we'll save that for a separate yeah, video. Yeah, we will, because cause it's kind of a, it's something you think about as a homeowner, right? Yeah. Like you're like, how much does all this mm -hmm. furniture cost? Yeah. So the majority of our furnishing came from Costco. So furniture came from Costco. Our house goods came from uh, Amazon Basics. And then our decorations largely came from home goods. So we'll break that out in another video, but we pretty much that's how we uh, got the house fully furnished. So now that we have the house, we bought it, closed on it mid June. Where are we at, right? So so we're at the end of June. So it took us. So we closed on the first Wednesday of June, and we were ready to list in. Uh, two weekends so we did a lot of work in the you know two, in week and a half that we had so we listed sunday night on the Sunday night, two weeks after the closing, right? And Airbnb apparently takes like 24 hours from the time you list till people can start booking, you know, just doing some delayed filtering and checking, I guess. And then Monday morning, which was Juneteenth, so that was June 19th, yeah, we start getting bookings, you know. We, it was very exciting. It was, it was very quick and we were also some again we had doubts right we wanted it this to be profitable and i think we'll have a separate video about profitability and you know our strategy of you know what works and what doesn't but we learned a lot this past week and a half that there is demand for yeah. people we even a, in the summer months in phoenix mm -hmm. there's demand and if, if, for those of you that have used airbnb the usually the cancellation policy for airbnb is strict so Unless you cancel like you know well in advance, you don't get your money back. Some for some some bookings actually, unless you cancel in the twenty four hours that you booked, kind of like a flight a flight ticket, you don't get money back at all. And yet we have people still booking six months out, right? Because they want to secure the house and they know that they're coming here for a specific reason. 
so that demand is there and you know we're trying to find the right balance of how expensive yeah should it be to we're realizing we're getting booked fairly quickly and so we're reassessing uh our pricing uh, we want to make sure that we're we want have we want to have some decent occupancy but we don't want to deflate our uh pricing so much so that we're not making profit so we're trying to we've only been in the airbnb business for a week Week and and a half now. How, yeah. how how much do we have? And we already have over ten thousand dollars in you know bookings. Some so the way it, it, the way it gets paid out is a little different. You get paid once the guests are very close to checking in. So we don't have ten thousand dollars in the bank from Airbnb yet. But, but cancellation fees tell us that that right, right that's that about, revenue is there. That's a minimum of what we can expect right now. So. Yeah. Yeah, again, I think we can get into a separate details of, you know, profitability and, you know, how to sustain the business, but that's where we are. It's it's been a journey. Again, it's been a commitment. It's been stressing yeah. that you know, while we were trying to get the house in uh while we were trying to get the house ready, you know, making sure that the boys were taken care of, you know, they were kind of bored as they were watching mom and dad run around the house like crazy chickens. Uh so it's been a lot. It's been draining. It's been rewarding. Uh, a lot of love went into it. You know, both Han and I work full time. We love our jobs, very content. But there's something to be said about this being our business. And we wanted to succeed. Obviously, we want work to succeed too. But just this gratifying, like, pour your love into it. You really want your guests to just be happy. And right now, the guest who's in there, she's been extending her stay. Yeah. So she originally had it for eight days. Now she went up to 14 days and she might extend further. So she's very happy with where she's at. And that really, really warms my heart. I could probably cry talking about it, but just so much love and stress and care went into getting this house and all the heartache and, you know, turbulence that it took to get here it's mm -hmm. exciting and i'm sure there will be you know low parts of this things that we're going to learn and fail at and you know we'll bring you along in that journey as well but ultimately i think so far it's been a tale of committing to something and following mm -hmm. through and uh although we didn't dump all our savings into it we dumped a good well, amount not decent chunk yeah, yeah. four yeah. four hundred and fifty thousand dollar house is not cheap right no. with the interest rates you know that's the monthly maintenance is also not cheap either. And again, we'll get into that in, uh, another, in, video. in another video. But but ultimately, we did it. Mm -hmm. And so now we're on the other side of it. We have some learning to do, right? Making sure we hit the right price point, uh, what works, what doesn't work. But ultimately, uh, we're one week in and we figured we'd talk about it, sit down. Um, I'm sure Han's going to do some overlay of some of the footage of that house. Unfortunately, we didn't get more footage because we got it ready and then left and then we didn't realize our guest was going to stay in there as long as she was. So uh, we'll try to get another video of the house, maybe do a walkthrough of it fully uh, in a few weeks. But ultimately, we thought we'd sit down, talk about it a bit and uh, kind of share the good news. tell you guys what we've been doing behind the scenes. So, you know, some of our Costco videos where we're buying knives or uh, utensils and this and that or the uh, case of the case of oh, sparkling wine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's all going somewhere. So ultimately, it's a very fun and exciting journey. Mm -hmm. And we're excited to tell you guys about all of it. We have no secrets, nothing to hide. We'll tell you the good, the bad, and the ugly. So uh, yeah, many more videos to come. But this is just the start. All right. Well, thank you for watching. Until next time.